in this video, I want to set it up so that when our grenade goes off, as you will see by the log in the bottom right, when it goes off, I want a particle, uh, a Niagara system more specifically to play at the location of the explosion, as well as I want a simple sound to trigger. And then I'm going to do a brief explanation on damage. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and set that up real quick. So in grenade.h, we want to go ahead and forward declare the Niagara system. So class u Niagara system and class u sound base. That's going to be for our particles. This is going to be for our sound. Now let's go ahead and I'm just going to copy the u property do it under animation asset let's do u niagara system let's do ns underscore explosion same thing again u sound base sb underscore explosion okay not sure exactly what you're complaining about actually i think i need to add something might have to add something to the build CS. Let me check real quick. Okay, so yeah, I have to add something to the build.cs for to include Niagara. So if we head over here to our solution explorer, find our project name.build.cs, open that up. And here we have our public dependency module names. We can just go ahead and delete the head mounted display or replace it with Niagara. Control S to save it, and we are good to go. Now we should be able to go ahead and compile without any issue. Let's make sure. That took a little while. There it goes. So we built. Now on explosion, we pretty much just want to go ahead and try to spawn it. So what we're going to do is if ns explosion and if sb explosion we play the particle effects, then we play the sound at this location. So we can store this location here. So F vector explosion location equals this. We can go ahead and reset this back to explosion location and use that for where we spawn our particles and where we have our uh, sound actually, you know, fire. I'm going to go ahead and actually delete this actor's hit thing right there. So, we want to go ahead and include, let's see, was the U, what is it to play? I can't quite remember. U gameplay statics, play sound at location. So, I know this one for the sound. So, we have the world. So, get world. The sound, which is sb underscore explosion. You know, tell me the third parameter. There we go. The location, the rotation. And so we just have to apply the location and rotation. So explosion location. And the rotation can be anything. So f rotator, zero rotator. And the other parameters, the volume modifier, pitch multiplier, start time, yada, yada, yada. I'm just going to leave default. So we can create our own explosion for this. what's going to be a sound cue that handles the attenuation as well, so we don't need to tinker with any of that. Let's try U Gameplay Statics. Play... Let's see, what is it? I don't remember quite where you play Niagara Particle Effects. I know it's different than the normal Cascade ones. So, again, let me go check real quick. Okay, it's the U Niagara function library. So U Niagara function library. And let's see, what is the include for this? U Niagara functions library. It's just Niagara functions library dot h. Let's head up and include that. There we go. And same thing, you probably
probably need to include your gameplay statics in order to actually play Santa location and have it fill out. So make sure to include Kismet gameplay statics.h. Here we have our Niagara functions library. We can do spawn system at location. Then we have the world, so get world, the Niagara system, which is NS explosion, then the location, which is explosion location. Then the rotation, which by default is a zero rotator. So we don't need to pass that in. Actually brings up the question of, do we need to pass in the rotator or is that zeroed out as well? Okay, so I guess that's by default a zeroed out rotation. Anyway, so if our explosion particle effect is valid, we spawn it at our explosion location. If our sound is valid, we play it at that location. So let's go ahead and build. I'm gonna go ahead and restart the editor close down the web page, and relaunch the editor. So now we should be able to just set this stuff up very easily. Here's our grenade, here's our Niagara system, and our sound. So for the explosion sound, I'm just going to select, we have our sound wave here, which is our shooting. So I'm going to head to that real quick. And I want to just do a quick little discussion on sound attenuation. So audio... Here it is. Actually, you guys can't hear it. Hopefully it's not too loud. Love that a bit. But this sound, if we play it directly, it's going to be heard like a 2D sound, so to speak. So anywhere we are, it doesn't matter how far away we are from the explosion. As long as the actor is relevant, we will hear it as if we are right beside it. The way we can fix that is if we right-click, create a cue. Let's just do... Uh, SC for sound cue underscore explosion. Open that up. Click on the output. Over here we see attenuation settings. So we don't have any right now. But what we can do is we can right click. Go to sounds, sound attenuation. This one's going to be SC underscore explosion. Or sorry. SA explosion. Open that up. And for the volume, we have inner radius and fall off distance. That means what the inner radius is, is within 400 centimeters, we will hear the explosion as if we are right beside it. The sound is going to be at its max volume. So whatever, you know, we set it at. Then the fall off distance means we will hear the sound all the way and it will gradually get quieter and quieter and quieter until we are 3,600 centimeters away. Once we go past that distance, we will not hear the sound. So by default, uh, I think this is okay. I'm going to crank 400 up to 500 and do 5,000 for the follow-up distance. Just crank it up a bit because it is supposed to be a big explosion. Then back in our sound cue, click output. We want to set our attenuation settings to our explosion attenuation. Now back in our grenade for our sound, we select the sound cue. Let's give it a try. We should be able to hear it. I'll get up close to it, which is behind this thing. There it is. So that sounded about like shooting. And let's get farther away from it. Hopefully it doesn't go behind anything. Okay, so there it is. Let's see if we can hear it. Still relatively loud. Let's just chuck it in the corner. And go all the way back here. And I don't know if you could tell through the recording or not, but it was a good bit quieter. So I'd say it was probably half of the sound, or the half as loud as when we were, it was right here and we were right here. So from, let's see, give a rough idea for that scale. So it was about 500. We start at zero. So from here here so about this is about 500 so after this distance it will start falling off and as well as i was able to tell where it was coming from so back here i could tell when i threw it over here that it had rolled over in this corner area right here based off of the sound so that's kind of how the sound attenuation works so we have that now we need our particle effects let's go ahead and create those real quick we're going to go to our grenade folder just right click create a FX, we create a Niagara system. New system from selected emitters. 
let's just do a omnidirectional burst since it'll be any direction. You can double click it and hit finish. This one's going to be NS underscore explosion. And pretty much this is what's going to play. I'm not going to bother trying to make it any nicer than that. You can do that yourselves because I, quite frankly, I am terrible with this kind of stuff. But back in our grenade, we can set our Niagara system to be our NS explosion. So now, when we go to throw it, wait for the fuse to run out. There was our Niagara system. Now I want to crank up the size of this thing because it's quite small. I'm going to click on Omnidirectional Burst. Could be something here related to uh, velocity. So I want to add actually a lot. Well, spawn count's 100. Let's bump it up to, we'll just double it. And we're going to crank up the size. Add velocity from point, minimum 75. Let's bump that up to 200. Make the maximum something like 1,000. Look a lot bigger, or a lot bigger like that. Crank the minimum up to 450. Save it and see what it looks like. Now to me, that's a good bit better. Now the only thing we have to do is destroy it. So once all this happens, we want to destroy our grenade. So we're just simply going to call destroy. And that's literally it. So now we can recompile. Uh, we should be good to go. I don't have to relaunch the editor since it's just the .cpp. Go ahead and throw it. Make sure it despawns. Like that. So, our grenade is now complete. We have everything we need. Everything is good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that sound or this log. And I will give a quick discussion, well, overview of everything in the next video. So, I will see you then. And as always, again, I'm just repeating myself at this point. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description, where I also have a Team Deathmatch series, which you can purchase as well and have lifetime access to. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hop in my Discord. That's linked in the description as well, and I will try to answer any questions that you may have. So, see you in the next video.